So we've opened XYZ Maker, and the first thing you see is the plane that we can put our images on that we're going to create in 3D. If we hold control on the keyboard, we are able to tilt the plane, spin it in any direction. You'll notice in the bottom left corner where it says front, as we control, click, and drag, you can see which part of the picture plane you are looking at. So that lets you know anytime the plane is out of whack or in a position you don't like or uncomfortable with, press this home button and it brings you immediately to the front at this kind of slightly above view so we can see the plane pretty well. Uh, we have a zoom, so zoom in a little bit, or you can use the wheel on your mouse, pull in, pull out by spinning the wheel, press home to get it back to its original position, and you can also zoom out with the minus again you back. We have the, this button makes the plane disappear so you can just see your work. Let's get some work on. We have a toolbar at the top. We'll go over what these are. And we have our uh, shapes and fonts and numbers things on the left side. The star represents recently used forms we put out. And you'll notice at the bottom of any window it gives you the page and how many pages of shapes you have. Your geometric figures will mostly be using four uh, bubble blowers, or bubble ones, excuse me. Uh, you see there's two pages here. We have fonts, or text, right? Upper and lower case, six pages of each. Your numbers, special symbols, special shapes. These are a little more difficult to use, but uh, some of these would be nice to add to a bubble one, like the stars and hearts. And you have a text tool to type with toolbar at the top. Anytime you do something that you don't like, you can undo or command Z, redo. So if you undo something and decide you want to redo it to make a change, just redo. You can copy, command C, or use the shortcut. Command V will paste or use the shortcut. And a fast way to do things would be to clone it. And I'll demonstrate how these work in a moment, but that will do copying and pasting over the original sheet you have selected. We can group and ungroup, and you'll see why that's useful. Aligning the objects, once you align them, which means you have them in the place you want them exactly lined up, the way you like them lined up, horizontally and vertically, you can group them so that they stay aligned and we don't move them around. Landing it, we'll put it on the picture plane. Mirroring it, we'll flip it horizontally and vertically. The hole button, we'll get into a little later in another lesson, but that will punch a hole in your 3D shape, and deleting things. Or you can select something and delete on your keyboard. And we have this grid button here. We're not really going to play with that in the early lessons. All right, now that we saw some of these tools, one thing I forgot to mention with the uh, plane, if you hold the space bar and click and drag on the plane, you can move it laterally. So it's not rotating, but we can move from side to side, up and down without tilting the plane or spinning to another side. So control click, spins, spacebar keeps it at the pitch or tilt you like and lets you move up and down, left and right, and then can zoom in on a specific area. So what we are going to do today is work on some bubble ones. I'm going to start with our geometric figures. When I come in, uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do is make a handle for the bubble one these probably the best shape to start with would be just the cube tool. So once you select the cube, drag it out onto your plane, keep it kind of close to the front of your picture plane, and drop it in, and you'll notice you have an X, Y, and Z axis for length, width, and height, and you now have this properties pop-up window. And you because we're working in three dimensions now we have position and dimension. Dimension, if we increase it, X dimension makes it go wider. All right. So dimension is all about how wide, thin, tall, or deep your shapes are, whereas position moves it on the picture plane or the shape plane. You can move forward, back, or lift it off the plane if need be. Be 
careful when you're moving on the plane, when you're working with that z-axis, you don't want to go through the plane because we can't print beneath the print bed on our 3D printer. Okay, so once you make your shape, we need, or once you bring a shape out, we need to then play with the dimensions to make it into a handle. So you want to grab your scale axis, your x-axis, and you just want to make your handle long. Your grid is set up, I believe, in millimeters, but we'll have to play with that. Try to make your, your handle a good uh, maybe two-thirds of the picture plane, the width. When we go to the y-axis, this gets a little tricky. You want to thin it out. If I move above, oh, I made a mistake, so I undo. We can hold control and click and rotate to see how wide our handle is. We don't want it too wide because it needs to fit into the, the caps of our soap if we're using you know, bubble, bubble soap uh, mixture that's in a bottle. You want to be able to fit in. You notice it's very tall, so we actually want to take that Z axis and scale that down. As I scale it, you notice it's lifting off the plane. Right? So if I select that, if you try to land it, oh, Rest it right back on the plane. So we land it once we lift it up. And just make sure you have your wand handle. Once you have it the size you want, you can place it a little further back on the plane if need be. Zoom out or in to work a little more. Now we need a place for our uh, bubbles to form. So we need a round or oval shape at the end with a hole in it. So here we are, we have our handle, we're bringing in a shape. I go back to my geometric shapes, and rather than bring in a circle or an oval or half circle and fuse things together, we're pretty lucky XYZ provides pre-made shapes right, with a hole in it. So choose one that you like, drag it out. We're gonna line it up pretty well with the handle. We don't have to attach it yet, and we wanna be careful that we don't cut off part of the hole for the soap to go through because it won't be round anymore if we have that flat edge if you see where our cursor is disrupting. So I'm going to get it close and now we're going to resize that by grabbing your axis. Notice as I drag that axis or that point, that shape now is no longer aligned with our handle. So if I hold shift and select our handle, oh, I'm sorry, if I hold command and select now both selected, I'm going to come up to a line, and it's going to give us an option. Hold Command, select the second shape, I'm going to go to a line, that makes them both yellow, and I click, if you notice, if I float my mouse over the shape, you can see it wants to align it with the oval, the first shape I selected. All right, so once I Get the shape aligned where I like. I click, and now they are aligned. Now, once they're aligned the way I like it, I'm going to select both again. Remember, select one shape, hold Command, select the other, and now they're both selected. I'm going to group them. Now, at this point, anytime I select any half of my bubble wand, they are both selected. I slide around. Notice that they're. Selected, but I need to check these proportions. I know they're both laying on the, the plane, but if I come to a profile view, I can see my handle is thicker than the wand. There's two things I can do. I can either make the wand thicker or my handle thinner. But to do that, I have to ungroup them. So now I'm going to come back to ungroup. Now they are two separate shapes. When I click, click each one as its own shape. I'm actually going to, just so it's more sturdy, increase the z-axis. I could do that over in dimensions here. I'll just match. And I see it's at 9. I can double check that number with my handle. See that this is at 8.39. They're not quite the same. So I could move this guy up to 9. Oh, that worked great. I could also type in here. 
return. And now they should be the same dimension as the axis. Let's zoom in. Doesn't quite look like they are. I think the numbers say they're the same. So it still would print with this lip. So I'm going to visually align them. The numbers are a little different, which is interesting, but we're going to go by what we visually see. And we'll find out when it comes out in the print if that's working. Now you notice they're not quite aligned any longer since we've been playing with the axes. So I'm going to command and click. I'm going to go to align my objects. That was a mistake, so I undo. Let's touch them up a bit. Check our position. They look about the same thickness. If I look above, you can see they're not centered. I can eyeball this as well. I mean, look at it visually myself. But I can also realign again because I want to align them perfectly and group them. So once the line off, so in. Pretty well aligned. We look for the center line. So once we have it aligned the way we like, command, click both again if they're deselected and group them. And now they are one shape. Anytime I click and pull. All right. So now that everything is aligned and looking the way we want, we can start to make our bubble wand a little more fancy. Oh, I'm gonna double check. I notice it's. This is why our thickness was off, so let's be careful with that. Below the picture plane, we see this part of the wand is too thick, so I must ungroup, change the position. Let's try to land it. Here we go. And now we can see why the thickness was a little off. the numbers of the Z dimension 6.78 and 9. Let's see if this works. Now they should be the same. Command to click to select both. Group them and now we're ready to work. Remember always check under the plane sure everything is lined up. It looks like this one's a little bit out of plane as well. Interesting. Now we're good. Always check that before, otherwise we won't be able to print well. All right, so now we can start to add some extra design elements to our wand. We can come in and we can use our initials, can grab some interesting shapes, such as stars or hearts, pre-made shapes to go in would look pretty nice. Uh, music symbol, G clef, some really cool things we can put in here. So maybe for this I'm going to grab a star, drag it out, and now I just it's a matter of where do I want to place it, how thick do I want it to be, and how large do I want it to be playing with these dimensions. Bigger. And let's look over the plane to kind of see the size we want. Maybe I want the star at the end of my wand. So to make it the way I like, you can use uh, these rotate tools. Or these rotate symbols let us know which way we're rotating our shape. Z rotation, you can see we'll flip and down to get Z dimension. I'll undo that because I definitely don't want my star standing up. What I do want to do is spin it in the X rotation. The reason why, at least for my design, is I would like this part of my 
my star to maybe line up. Now, I don't want to just use the tip of my star to touch because on a 3D print that would be too thin. If it just touched the end, it would easily break off. So something you need to be careful with is how you attach any new shapes you bring in. This would break very easily with that small attachment, so I might want to bring it up a little so that it's in there nice and tight. Another thing I can do is change that Z dimension. I said it was at nine. Maybe I want to match it. I could make it thinner. That's up to you and your design process. And if I look, I noticed putting it at nine, it was not as high up. So I need to land that so that it matches. And now I can see where they're touching and overlapping when it's selected. It's in nice and tight. I may actually want to even make that, just so the star stands out a little, a little higher than nine, so you can see it a bit above the handle. Maybe I want the corners of this handle to touch the edges of the star so it's really nice and tight. Okay. So changing my point of view, you can see the gap here. Above. That looks nice. I'm going to just check beneath the picture plane, and it did, in fact, go beneath, so I'm going to land it one more time. Check my plane. If I like where it is, I like how it's aligned, and I could have used the align process, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to command and click both, group them. Now we have a nice design in there. I can come in and start adding initials. I'm going to add, since this is a gift for another school, I'm going to add the initials of that school. And place them on the hand. Right now it's below the handle, but if I change the proportions, I like how that cross line of the H and the E are crossed by the handle. That looks pretty neat. If I want these dimensions to match, I'll check my H. It's 24 height. That's my name tall. This is 24.3 versus 24.4. So let's make this match and see how that works. Line them is 28.57. So just type that in. Let's match it up. Now, I can select both even without grouping them and change that Z dimension to 9 if I want it to go above. I want to land those. I still want to double check just to be safe. I like the way it looks. Group them. Could do a couple more things. There's more shapes. Maybe I want to put a heart in between there. So a little added design. And I'm going to raise that Z dimension. I'm going to just the position. Zoom in to make sure it's really attached to my handle. I like the way it looks. I'll group that in. So it doesn't have to come all the way down to the bottom here it can, and give you a nice texture of everything. And I have a nice bubble one that I can 3D print. Eventually, if I have time, I can get a little fancy and start putting in some other shapes. Maybe I want to have multiple heads to blow the bubbles through. If I make one that I like, this one's a little tiny, maybe I'll stretch that out a little. If I like it, I can copy and paste it, or maybe I want to clone it. If I hit the clone button, I now have a second one directly at the top of this one. So I can pull it out, drag it over. I can line these two up by selecting both. Align. 
until they are lined up. Just make sure they're not in control check underneath. Good. You can make these thicknesses match, but I kind of like that they're below. You could even select both of these, group them. clone them, now bring another set up. That doesn't look quite right, maybe I want it up here. If I like it, I'm going to leave it put. I'll group it with everything else. And I could even put some more on the sides if I like. I kind of like this design, I'm going to stick with this. I'm ready to save my design and print file, save as. I'm going to check S, click STL file. We're going to put this on our class Dropbox, just under where you find our Dropbox and your room number. Right? And you put your name and your room number, and the rooms to 11, I'll put bubble wand, and save it. Once it's saved and ready to print, we can send it to our 3D printers. Remember, you can make your bubble wand look how you wish, add whatever extra shapes you want to add, as many heads to the wand as you like. Uh, remember to save so we can print, and thanks for watching.